And before we begin the video, I just want to say thank you so much for all the support on our past audio stories. Special thanks to Andrea T for making the art that I retraced. It's beautiful and that's why I decided to use it. Before beginning, I just want to let you guys know, for the best experience, turn the volume on your device all the way up and use headphones for the best experience. I hope you enjoy. I hope you like Sarah Buren's story. Yo, I'm Sarah Buren and this is my story. I was born in New Hill Crest at the Winterwill Emergencies Hospital. I was the oldest of all of my siblings, which means I got a lot of the attention. Though, growing up, not so much. Anyways, my little parents, Jacqueline and Liam, were anticipating my arrival for a long time because I was very late at my birth. But when I finally was released from the womb, they were very happy to have me. Now, when we went back to our home, they already lived in Golden Hills Valley. But we would commonly visit New Hillcrest twice every three weeks. I loved my family so dearly. I was enrolled in public school when I was mm, around, like, kindergarten. I had always been homeschooled until I was 12. School wasn't always that bad, but sometimes it would get pretty boring. I was known to be the prankster in the classes, which usually meant I got in trouble a lot. I just always had such a sense of humor. I didn't know how to hold it in, despite my parents talking me over and over and over about it. But later on, my parents gave birth to Joanna, Sabrina, and Samson. Those are my siblings. Yep, they're quite the handfuls. And usually my parents would be away because they both worked. So that often meant I had to keep watch of them. But this was when I was old enough to stay home alone, of course. I loved my family, as I stated before, but sometimes they were just caught up in needing money and all this other stuff. They didn't have time to listen to my jokes or to see my little music, magical show things I used to perform. I was a crazy kid, and all I wanted was some attention. And every morning I did my chores and did everything they told me but just part of me still felt like I wasn't that type of kid they talked about me going to a prep school and well I'm glad they didn't instead they finally listened to me and brought me into homeschool when I was around 13 thank goodness I dodged a bullet there I visited New Hillcrest so often that I was a stable girl for her for most of my life, until my parents finally settled and only visited once a month. I enjoyed visiting the workers at New Hillcrest and risked school friends for it. Sadly, it still didn't mean I had a lot of friends, even if I did meet some friends that happened to be school workers or whatever was going on there. I always felt like New Hillcrest was my real home, since I was born there after Hall, but after they moved me into this whole other area where I only could go there once a month, not to mention we stayed in Laurel Cape West instead of just in the Golden Hills area, I finally admitted I wasn't going to be able to manage homework, school, New Hillcrest chores, chores, cafe visitings, golden leaf chores, and friend hangouts and settled into a new lifestyle of being homeschooled. I just, I couldn't ever handle all of that at once. So, honestly, being homeschooled was probably the best decision. I was so busy with so much and it worked out for me as I could take off sick days, birthdays, holidays, and anything, uh, any other events that meant more to me than stuff. But that still didn't help the fact that my parents didn't like me going to New Hillcrest as often as I liked. But still, I had been public schooled for so long, and it was definitely an adjustment. One day, I was just taking a nice walk through the fields, of Golden Hills Valley. Despite me liking New Hillcrest a little bit more, that didn't mean I didn't like Golden Hills. It was beautiful and it was just such a nice break from all of the things. 
even if homeschool's not a handful like public was, I'm still thankful that I got the chance to just take a break from it all sometimes. Sometimes I wondered, maybe this chore thing isn't a good idea anyways. It's nice knowing so many people, but I would never call them friends. I couldn't believe the energy in this girl that I saw, though. Her name was Claire Adams, and I also saw this girl named Alice that she was friends with. I just talked to them for a little bit since I was kind of lonely, and I hadn't talked in a while, and I'm quite the talker. When I started talking to them, they seemed pretty friendly and energetic. Alice was a little shy at first, and I could tell she didn't really trust newer people. But since Claire and I were talking it up, she finally got the confidence to start talking to me. They both seemed like dope people, and I just enjoyed having a conversation. Turns out they both lived in Golden Hills just like me. Claire and Alice actually had kind of a similar story as me. Claire had always been homeschooled, and, well, she moved from Texas all the way to a major move to here in Yorvik. Alice, she always lived here, but she had a lot of hard personal problems as well. As I turned 14, I was starting to wonder if, if maybe I was meant to ride a horse. I took care of horses all the time, but I never really got into the saddle. But my parents wouldn't allow it. After a big accident my mother had one time, my father just wouldn't let it happen. And don't even question about my mother. She was so set on me just being some punctual girl, just like my sister's. But I didn't want to be like that. I want to be a comedian when I grow up. That's what I would always tell her, but she didn't listen. No one did. Except for Claire and Alice, of course. Alice and Claire were the only people that actually listened to me, to my jokes, to my aspirations. But despite that side of me, I feel like sometimes I showed it too much, to the point people just thought I was the funny girl that always pushed problems out. The truth is, my family is great, but we haven't always been the perfect fantasy family. I don't think any family's perfect, but especially not mine. I had a lot of yelling happen at my household. My parents would just fight and fight. I would sit in the corner, hoping that they wouldn't divorce. I just... I just... I grew up thinking my family was perfect. Nothing ever let them down. But I started to doubt that as I got older. Being the oldest in my family always means that I have to look out for them. But sometimes I wish someone was looking out for me. And maybe my parents will say that, but I still didn't feel like they did actually look out for me. No one did. I was on my own, and I always was going to be just Sarah. I wasn't going to be some big shot. And now I don't believe it any more than that, than I did before. But, you know, the fighting started to die down, but it would come back every once in a while. I just it gained a lot of feelings inside that I never had before. I was always the jokester, and I was always happy, but... When that started happening, I started realizing people just see me as laughing and joking all the time. When really, I have more to me than it seems. I can cry and I can be angry. I don't just have one feeling in my body. I was starting to fail at school and my parents started asking more and more of me. I just couldn't take it anymore. One day, I just... I just decided to go for a ride with Claire and Alice and talk all of my feelings out. I instantly felt better, and I just felt like there was no point in hiding anymore. One day, we were just taking care of our horses when, all of a sudden, I found this poster for a shop opening. It seemed really old, but Claire and Alice really wanted to see it, so I decided to go with them. And we just did it as more of a joke than anything, since we figured it wouldn't be opened. 
it was a strange location as well. Scarecrow Hill. I'd visited there a few times, but every time it was usually completely isolated. No one talking or moving. But when we got there, there were suspicious things happening. Claire went to go investigate, as she's the bravest one. At least, that's what I always think of. She took a while, and we started to get worried. I dragged Alice along with me when I really regret that I didn't. Or, well, I did. When we got up there, Claire was gone, and I heard voices. But it wasn't anybody around us, and it wasn't Claire's voice. I looked around, and I said to Alice, we have to go, and we'll continue the search later. Just get out of here for now. But that's when... A small gross girl, or at least that's what we thought at the time. She was coming after us, and we were so scared. Alice ran, and I sprained my ankle. I thought I was a goner. But then this girl showed up and ran after me. She asked if I was okay, but I just could not answer. My voice wasn't coming out. I felt more scared than I ever had in my life. It all got back to the moment when my parents were fighting that night. I almost blacked out. The little girl ran away, and so did Alice. I thought I would never see her again. The kind girl picked me up and asked if I was alright again. This time I could actually speak. When I looked over, I saw Claire's horse, which was not there before at all. As we investigated more and more, we found Alice and eventually saved Claire. That was one of the craziest moments of my life. Looking back on it, it wasn't as scary as it was back then. I wish I couldn't have even said we should have gone there. If I could go back in time, we wouldn't have gone through all that. Just recently, I realized that I really did want to follow my dream of becoming a comedian. I didn't know if I was serious enough. I didn't know if I was worth it. I don't know if I should even try. My siblings are doing more than me. I'm just sitting here being scared by ghosts when I should be doing something big. Some more crazy stuff happened, like Lisbeth was back and I wasn't sure if I could trust her. Me and Alice agreed on that. And I had another crisis, thinking I was probably not going to do anything right. But something I didn't ever tell them was I was already applying to a few colleges. I didn't think any of them would answer to this complete, you know, loser, but they did, and they wanted me. It was a moment in my life where I realized my whole life as being a jokester led up to this. So, well, I accepted it. I was scared to tell the girls, especially Claire and Alice, who had been there for me since the beginning. I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for them. And not to mention all of the new friends I've made. Scarlet, Alex, so many people. I just, I didn't think I could let them down like that. But then came the real reality. Friends will stick together no matter what. We're best friends forever. Maybe not by distance, but by heart. And that's what I'll do forever and ever. So I told them one by one. I told Alice first. She was confused, but she accepted it. She told me that she really wanted to go to college as well, but wasn't sure if it was her spot. I told her she is free to come with me someday if she wants. I didn't know what to expect if I went to college. I told Claire next because I felt the hardest saying goodbye to her. I mean, Claire has talked to me throughout a lot. I'm pretty sure she's the first person I even told about my whole parent situation. Anyways, when she found out she was sad, and 
she was taking some of her anger out on other people, but she still accepted it and understood that it's my choice and she'll still support me no matter what. I told Yova and Scarlet and everybody else, they all accepted it but couldn't at the same time and I didn't think I could do it. Before I knew it, it was too late and I was already packing my bags. I had tears in my eyes, and I just brought a bunch of old fo photos I took with my camera, and just, I hugged them, and I cried myself to sleep. The next morning, I went to the airport, waiting anxiously for my friends to arrive to say goodbye. Each hug was more emotional each time. I started with Alice, as she was the first one I told. I wanted to thank her for being honest, kind, and most of all, trusting towards me. And that she should never forget who she is. Next, I told Claire, Thank you for dealing with all of my horrible problems. Thanks for being generous, and thank you for being so sweet throughout all of this, and just supporting me. I hugged Scarlet, and I told her, Even though we didn't know each other as long as we did, I want to thank you for being the best friends and person I could talk to. Thank you for spending hours playing video games with me and coming up with cheesy jokes to write in our book. I hugged Yulva and told her, you were like a mom that I wish I could have had. My mom was always so strict on me and always laid all this stuff on top of me when I quite frankly did not want to do it. You were like the mom that actually listen to me. And sure, you might be kind of a peculiar mom, but you're a funny one, and that's what matters. We all started to cry, and I just, I, everything just flashed back. From the moment we met, to the Scarecrow incident, to meeting Scarlet, to our most recent adventure, and losing lots of amazing people. Not to mention Lisbeth's whole family, but also losing my brother. He died, and I, I never wanted to tell anyone, but I knew I could tell my MC squad. <sighs> so I waved goodbye, and I just, I didn't want to. As soon as I aborted the plane... I already started feeling like I made the wrong decision. Currently, I'm still in my second year of college. It's been amazing. I haven't met a lot of new friends, but that's okay because I've been having some fun talking to my friends online still. Is it hard? Uh, yeah, obviously. But I know I'm achieving my dream, and I'm getting a step closer every single day to when I get to see them again. In person. Do I miss them? <laughs> yeah, a lot. Every single day I worry that they forget me, but then I remember they could never forget this girl. Maybe I'm a jokester, and maybe I am a comedian, but... That doesn't mean I can't cry and be angry, just like I stated before. So, to anyone out there who is having problems like I have, like fa family situations, losing someone, or any of the problems I've covered today, just know it'll get better. I can't say when or how, but I assure you it's going to get better. But the one thing you have to remember is you will get through it. And it may be, like, the worst thing right now. But in the future, you'll look back at it like, hey, at least this came out out of it or something like that. So, anyways, thanks for listening to my crazy story. I hope you enjoyed. Peace out, guys. Love ya. Siesta stars.